Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I have a small project that probably will end up being a large project the way <laughs> my day is gone. I tried to, um, to sew together a Coptic book that was like, you know, four inches thick and it did not go well, so I ended up ripping it all out, deleting all the process. And now I've decided to take on a much smaller project. I had some leftover, I think this is Canson mixed media paper, so you can get it wet or you can do and you can do watercolor on it, whatever. So I wanted a book book. You know, I wanted a nice book. So I Coptic stitched here, 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 and here, the three places. And then I took glue and the webbing and I pinched all this together, put the glue down, then I put the webbing over it, snipped it and trimmed it. Now I have this lovely book and I want to cover it. So I actually had the ends, backs of these left over and uh, I was thinking I might want to make this more like a soft cover and not exactly a hard cover, although I'm going to need something um, here to make it easy. So I actually thought about cutting off part of this and gluing this onto a substrate then cover the book with a soft cover. I have craft text. I use this to make a couple things. Here's the actual package that went the instructions and the stuff that came with it. I washed my craft text when I first got it. The only one that bled was the red. I think I might like to try this green cover. I was thinking about, you know, doing one of those fold over covers. So this will cover here, and then this will go here. Probably I'm going to need to cut a little bit off. But I want to put a nice rigid back on it, but the rest of it I could care less about. I mean, I don't care if it flips and flops and it's loosey-goosey. I'm, I'm not concerned about that. But I would like to make this a rigid um, spine. Um, I thought about the green, but now I'm looking at the teal. Do I really want to... Uh, well, it comes with a... An, oh, I guess this is an orange. Oh, they call this tangerine. Let me go through this the way it says. Turquoise greenery. Blue iris. Orchid, Marsala, this one feels really thick. I think this one's a different height and different, see it's, it's a different size than the rest of them. Now I remember, and this is tangerine. I don't know, what do I want to use? I like all of these colors in here. Do I need a red book? I really, I like this color. It's not as in your face as the green. So I think maybe I'll use this color. I call this teal, they call this turquoise. I don't know, it's kind of hard to know. All right, so I'm gonna use this color. Get this stuff out of the way. Now I have to figure out what kind of substrate I'm gonna use for this. I need something really rigid. I could glue these two together, or I could go look for some chipboard that I already have that's thick enough it would support this. And I'm not going to make it, I mean, I'm going to glue it on the substrate, then I'm going to glue it on here, and I'm going to glue it so that I can make this a trifold. Is that what they call this, a trifold? And then I can put it here, like this. Of course, it'll be cut off so it's smaller. I'm not looking to make anything fancy. I just want to use it so I can maybe carry it in my purse. We're on an airplane trip you know, in my purse, and then put some watercolors with it. And then I get where I'm going, I can putsy around with this. Or I could sell it in the Etsy store. Let me go look for some chipboard before I get carried away. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to skip the craft text for now and do the rigid cover. Don't really wanna do it that way, but I think I'm gonna have to, because when I open the book up, it buckles here. So I'm going to need a way to open the book without buckling here. And I think 
Oh, As I was mercy. saying before, the phone rudely interrupted. I'm going to need to put a cover on this, and it doesn't have to be like thick. I like the thick spine though. So I think what I will do is I will use tape and tape these all together. Cut this and do a rigid, you know, semi-rigid cover. Not exactly what I had in mind. But I think it'll be okay. What the hey? Throw caution to the wind. my drawers and I found this and this will be what I'm going to use to fix my screw up. This is very sturdy, heavy duty paper. And you have to wet it. So I need wet. <laughs> I need something to wet it with. Oh my god. Oh, I forgot today's Monday. Totally blanked out that today's Monday. It doesn't take a lot. Just take a little bit. I'm going to lay it down on here. Whoops, I moved it. I'm going to flip it over and then fold it over. I'm going to take my bone folder and make sure this is nicely done. And I'm going to fold this over, make sure my book will open nicely after I screwed it all up. So then we can put it in here, which is too wide of a space. Look at that. It's, well, it'll be all right, I guess. There we go. Like this. And then I'll pull this up. And I'll end up cutting off this section here. And then, let me hold this so you can see it. There'll be a little more trimming on this side, and there'll be a whole lot of trimming on this side.
There are easier ways, which is every way other than this. <laughs> My goodness. See, if you don't use it, you lose it. You forget how to cover a book if you're not careful. What a nincompoop. All right, um, I'm going to put a little more tape on here just for the inside to assure that this will hold up. I'll just put it right over the center. Because I want to give it a little more stability. Because evidently... <laughs> There's nothing stable about this project. <laughs> Alrighty then. Let's see. The best way to do was to be a, to begin with would have been to put the piece of um, substrate here and glued everything at the same time and not <laughs> not got into this silliness here for Pete's sake. All right. So what I'm gonna do now is go find some kind of paper um, to wrap this in, and then I will finish the book. The, but the sewing's already been done, and I'm thrilled about that part. But sometimes Coptic does get a bit tedious. Well, <laughs> let's say the way I do it gets a bit tedious. <laughs> I would like one of those tools where you shave off everything and it all matches. All right, so I don't think gluing craft text on here is a very good idea. So I'm going to print off some of the paper that um, I made the other day. Here's the first one. So this is what I'm going to cover the outside of the book in. Is this. So in order to make sure that I get what I want on here. Whoa, wrong ruler. My goodness, what happened to a shorter ruler? Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. I'm going to cut the white off because I don't want that to end up on anything. Because I want nothing but color. I hope this goes well. <laughs> Y'all say a prayer. I don't care if it's straight. It's not the point, because this is going to be tucked up under something. But I wanted the majority of the white off. And there we have it. There we have it. We have it. Okay. So I have this much for here. This much here. I have enough on the ends. So I don't need to cut anything off of the sides, I think that would be fine. So usually when I'm trying to narrow down the bulk off the paper, I will use this because I think the width of this is three quarters of an inch. And I think that will be sufficient, whoops. I think that will be sufficient for this project. I'll just scoot it on down. where the fold is. This is where the fold is. So I'm going to do it from here. Whoops. There we go. And I'll leave the sides because I think the sides are probably good enough. Okay. So there we have the outside of my book which is very loud and obnoxious. <laughs> All right, so I think what I need to do is to glue down this section first. 
with some kind of glue. Oh, I have PVA, but I'm going to use this. A lot of people use paint brushes. I'm not that sophisticated. <laughs> Y'all been watching my videos long enough, you know. Okay, so let's get this. A while back, and I've told this story two or three times now, but um, a while back, one of my um, fitted sheets on the bed had a hole in it, and I took it up and cut the elastic off of the fitted part, and I dyed my white sheet with, what I use? Uh, I think I use Bombay ink or P.F. Del Roni's something. Anyway, so I want to, this is not like true blue, 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 blah, blah, blah. I was looking at thought, oh, that looks matches. And I'm looking at it going, oh, no, it does not. <laughs> so, um, um, maybe this is not the best use of this. I was going to use this for a tie and go ahead and glue it in here before I put the papers down. And now I'm thinking that was not the best choice. It looked good somewhere else. <laughs> I don't think it goes very well. This is more a, a sky blue, and this is more like a true blue, I guess, or a darker blue. I don't think this is going to work. I wasn't going to use sorry ribbon. I was going to use this bed sheet that I dye because, you know, it's easy and quick. I don't think that's a very good match. Oh, fooey. <laughs> let me go find something else. All right, so let me bring the jar over. I'm trying to run it back and forth. This is the jar I keep my sheet, my dyed sheet stuff in. So I have pink. A lot of pink. Because I used it in another project for Artemat. And I dyed this, this especially for Artemat. This I just dyed random. Oh my God, what's all this? Oh, that was for another Artemat project. I was like, oh my God, what is wrong with me? No. Okay, so that's a no. And then I have yellow, which wouldn't be horrible because there is yellow in there. So that would be, um, no, I don't know if I'm, I'm, I'm digging the yellow. All right, so then I have, I already showed you the purple. I do have some coffee, coffee dyed, and then I have some green, which I don't, where is it, I don't think I have an, oh, I have very little green, I mean I have a little bit, but I need enough to, oh, <laughs> that's not going to work, <laughs> I need enough to tie the tie. Uh. No. Okay. Well, maybe green's out. Well, definitely not this blue. Because it's more a turquoisey blue. I don't think I want pink either. So I put all this back in here. Wah. The rest of the sheet that isn't dyed is in the closet in the container. And I don't want to dye any stuff for this. But I'm thinking maybe this or the yellow. I think this. Okay, so we're going to do the, I think it's either coffee dyed or tea dyed paper. And I need, yeah, that's long enough. Don't you just love it when things are exact? All right. I might have to do some more coffee stuff because I think that, I only have two or three rolls of this left. I might have to have a coffee dye day. A dye and chat. I don't want to really put this in a big old knot. Okay, let's put it in there. Okay, so the nice thing about a sheet is... Ooh. 
rips like a champ. All right, so I'm going to glue. Ugh. First, I'm going to get these strings off of here. I think I'm going to glue just, you know, maybe I should do it all the way in here. Yeah. I can't do this yet. First, I have to do this. Then I do it later. Okay. Dear Lord, Vicky. Okay. Um, let's see. So let's cut. I need a proper pair of scissors here. Let's take this. I like how everybody cuts it rounded. Let's see if this works. These guys in the trash. All right. I think when I did this, I was taught that you glue like the two ends together first and then you do the rest of it. So I drag this on the table so I make sure that it gets this portion glued down. Let's run a bead of glue down here and just kind of squiggly, squiggly, squiggly. And again, drag it on the board and flip it over. All right, is that going to work? Oh, something on it does. Okay, so then I'm going to take a bead of glue here. And then squiggle, squiggle. I have a feeling I need to indentate this one. Okay, then drag it on the board. Well, I'll be, it works like a champ. Okay. Got that. And I printed off what I want to use inside. Probably should have used black, but I don't have any. So I think what I want to put on the inside is this. Yes, it's going to clash with the blue, but it's mine. I don't care. Blech. Do I really want to use this? I really like it though. All right, let me see if the other stuff I printed off looks good. I printed off some of the the prints that I did. All right, so this is a print. Is that a print? Yeah. Okay, so there's this one. This one, no. I could do this one, which is a little more subdued and more along the same line. Or I could do this one. This is the original there. This one, no. I don't have enough of this paper. Yes, I do. I think I have enough of this to do inside. No. No, no. Uh, yellow, no. And the rest of this paper was paper that I didn't like. And there's the original for that, the original for this, the original for that, and I can't use those. Okay, so this is an original. I'll have to print it off. Oh, fooey, let me just use this. Let me, let me just go wild and crazy. Fooey. <laughs> fooey, fooey, fooey. All right, where's that ruler? I, that sticking little thing runs off. What is it? Oh, I put it away. Nyeh. 
All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. I want the white off of it right away. Let's see what I have to work with. I don't... Oh, did I print two? No, I print two of the blue. I did not print two of this. So I'm thinking one of this will... put anything in the middle. I might glue a separate strip in the middle. That probably would work a lot better than making sure this doesn't wrinkle. Although I could do this in one swoop and be done with it. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine. Pencil, 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 pencil. All right. So I am going to cut this a little bit away from the pencil mark. All right, there's that. All right, let's see how this does. So I still have a little white here that I don't want to see. So I'm going to trim that off. Actually, I think I need to use a paper cutter because I would like for my lines to be straighter than what I usually do. So let me just whack off a teeniest of bits. There we go. And let me make sure this is more straight. Actually, I cut a little off of here, so this is the one I should use for the straight edge to go here. Now we can do this. Okay, so I was recording, and then I stopped it to move on to something else, and <laughs> just kept working and forgot to turn it on. So let me show you what I did. I, I glued the paper. You guys already knew that part. But I'm not, I wasn't happy with this, so I just took the other half of the inside of the paper and glued it to the outside two pieces of paper. It still unfolds, no problem. I just didn't like the way it looked because I wanted to cover up some of the, the substrate there. So now I'm going to glue this in here and then my little book should be done. I've been trying to cut off this uneven stuff. I, I love my giant paper cutter, but I think it will take brute force to cut through all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add glue to this and then I'm going to glue it into the spine of the book, or the middle section, the spine, I guess, and be done with it. And this is art glitter glue. This is not PVA, and I don't care if it's acid-free because I bet as soon as I keel over, my kids will sell this or take it off to Goodwill. You know, they'll sell it for 25 cents, and off to Goodwill it goes. So, like, I think that seems to be the fear of so many artists is that the kids will just go, okay, this is crap, and in the trash it goes, and then later they'll be like, wow, I don't have anything from mom's art. Well, don't be so, don't, don't be so fast to throw your parents' stuff away. 
Think about it a little bit before you toss every blessed thing, because later on, it's not going to be there when you want it. All right, so I'm going to pull this apart like this and make sure it's glued that way. And then I'm going to make sure we're good on this side too. There we go. And then I'm going to tie this shut so that it, it dries flat. All right, so there's my book. Ta-da! I'm all done. It only took like 55 hours. <laughs> Y'all, I go in with gangbusters and have the best of intentions, and I have a thing in my head, and then I get here and I'm like, oh, oh, that's not gonna work. Oh, and we're missing this, and now I gotta change that. This totally is not what I started out wanting. So there you go. There's metamorphosis of a series of mistakes that ends up with a finished book. Go figure. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Bye.